All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. All right, still reading through this amazing book. Here it is, close up. It is Don Felder's Time in the Eagles, Heaven and Hell. And uh, there's quite a bit of hell toward the end of this book. <laughs> if you're a Don Felder fan or if you're Don Felder himself, uh, you can't be too happy about how things went down. Now, there's a great quote, and it uh, could be the title of this video because I like this quote very much. Um, As one musician who worked with them, meaning uh, the Eagles, um, had once told me prophetically, we're just pumping gas in Mr. Henley's gas station. <laughs> Again, and look, as far as Don Henley goes, I've, I've said some good things about Don Henley. I've said some bad things about Don Henley. I think I've tried to be fair when talking about Don Henley. He is a very talented human being who has a great singing voice, but um, you know, he's been called all kinds of names by people that are more important than me. So uh, I'll leave it to those people who've called him names to you know, kind of define who Don Henley is. But um, we're at the point in the book where Don Felder gets fired. Now, Don Felder's attorney was doing something that was just kind of very procedural, wasn't anything extreme. I'll read it to you here. It says, Barry Tyerman had penciled a date on his calendar to check back with Irving Azoff on the progress of the box set deal. The Eagles had this box set, music from 1972, up until 1999, uh, the date finally arrived in early February, and Barry duly fired off a gentle letter asking for copies of certain agreements with the record label. So they wanted a copy of the agreements that were supposed to be signed and was supposed to be a done deal. A response came back that they were not signed. Now, the agreements weren't signed at all. So it's kind of weird because Felder had decided at that point to just do what these guys wanted them to do. He wrestled with it. He didn't like the fact that they were basically reorganizing the way um, the money was going to be um, spent, meaning that they were going to give more money to. Uh, Don Henley and Glenn Fry, and yeah, as one of my patrons says to me all the time, look, it was a, it was a matter of you know these guys are it's like the Lennon and McCartney characters, but do you pay George Harrison that much less money? Does doesn't George deserve something? And I'm not look, I'm not comparing Felder to George Harrison either. That's kind of a rough comparison, but. You sign an agreement. See, I wrestle with this because when you make an agreement, you join a band and it's all for one and one for all. I mean, when that occurred, did anybody really think about that agreement and say, well, we expect Felder to do as much as Don Henley does for this band? No. They just figured that, um, you know, in this economy, in this situation where it's the Eagles, we believe in equal distribution. But these guys don't, they don't believe that. Um, and yeah, Don Henley's, it's Don Henley's gas station and you're pumping gas there. And to some degree, uh, Glenn Fry is in that boat as well, but I think he's able to negotiate uh, in a place where obviously Don Felder can't because this is Glenn Fry's band, so to speak, even though I think Don Henley does take the band over to some degree. And there's a battle ensuing, and I would assume that these alpha male types weren't happy with one another. There's all kinds of talk in here where it could have probably been sort of fleshed out a little bit more about the disagreements between Glenn and Don. I think that would make some interesting reading, but I think Felder is basically writing on what he's seen, not what he's heard about. So I commend him for just keeping the book fair and diplomatic. But 
anybody reading this and reading how Felder gets fired can't think to themselves, wow, these are really great guys, Henley and Fry, because Felder was basically just saying, look, I want to see the books. I want to see how the sausage is being made, my attorney. See, the other guys, uh, Joe Walsh and Tim Schmidt, they're just like, yeah, just sign it. Just sign it. They probably signed it themselves without looking it over. You know, maybe they had an attorney check it over. I don't even know. But Felder had his attorney involved. And um, Glenn Fry at one point says, I don't want to get another letter from this Barry guy ever again. Because Felder basically has a nervous breakdown when Irving Azoff tells him that he's gone. And it's not your playing. It's not this. It's the fact that the band feels they need to move on because technically they don't like you getting in their way. They don't want you to know about how much money they're making. It's none of their or none of your business. And um, come on, Felder, just get with the program. And now there's no program to get with. And he then Felder says, I'll do whatever you want to do. I will sign these contracts. I will do whatever you want. I was just having my attorney do what my attorney normally does. It almost sounds like they're thinking, hey, why does Felder have an attorney? That's a hostile action that he is an attorney. But I'm thinking it's probably normal business practices for a rock star or anybody who's trying to be responsible and they want to know, you know, hey, is this a decent agreement? Should I sign this agreement? Um, You're looking after your own self-interest. Um, and we're not even talking about the agreement. This agreement cancels the original agreement. The original agreement's done, and Felder is still willing to do it. That's what a lot of people, I don't think, realize during this saga, that Felder was in the process of signing the contract. They just were upset that he was looking into what that contract said. So I don't think that's an outrageous thing to do if that's the truth. And by the way, Nobody's ever written a book to contradict this. Nobody has ever made any public statements. In fact, Don Henley's response to this was, well, things change. Things change. Okay, well, the original contract was the original contract. And yes, things changed a long time later. But again, I'm looking at this from the perspective of, again, Don Felder, on Hotel California alone should be grandfathered in to success because that song will earn the estates of these musicians and their offspring lots of money for decades to come. And who knows how much longer, you know, this kind of music will stay in the public consciousness, 100 years, 200, we don't know. We, I have no idea how it's going to be looked at in 50 or 100 years, but certainly um, Felder's kids will, would benefit. Everybody in this situation would benefit if the contract was written equal split. If anything, you look at Tim Schmidt and his contributions to the group, I can't tell you why. I mean, it's not, there's not a lot going on there, and he replaced Randy Meisner who, again, they're, both of those guys are great, and I don't want to disparage them, but you need a lead guitarist to play lead guitar on every track, okay? And you would say, well, you need a harmony vocalist to sing harmony. No, nah, yeah, but harmony vocals blend, and you've got, you know, you can tweak a knob here and there. Um, you could bring in studio musicians. I mean, there are things to do, but Felder was a really important part of both the live band and the studio recordings. And to me, it just, it just seems slimy that you've got an original deal and you're trying to cut yourself a better deal later on. I mean, the Eagles became, you know, back earlier in the book in the nineties, when they first came back after hell freezes over, um, you know, they're charging outrageous ticket prices and, you know, it was a running joke for you know a few years like do, do I pay the rent or do I go see the Eagles you know <laughs> that kind of thing and that was I mean and these are fans these are people that have waited over a decade plus to see their heroes again and the music never went away in fact it was a great way 
to, to kind of make the music more valuable, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And that's what happened. Uh, a lot of fans just kept buying the music and radio never let go of the music for the most part. They're starting to let go of certain tracks these days. But back in those days, it was, you know, all full steam ahead, Eagles all the time. So I think Felder was doing something just very um, normal having his attorney look over contracts. But these guys, either they were paranoid um, or they were just really controlling um, or they had a personal animus toward Don Felder. And I think there, you can make an argument for all three. You can make a solid argument. Felder, the way he breaks down, even in the documentary, Don Felder breaks down and cries and has to leave. Because he's thinking to himself, all I was doing was trying to make sure that I was taken care of compared to these guys. And I was still willing to be in this band despite getting, you know, the shaft financially. So, I don't know. I've read through this book and I don't think Don Felder is lying about it. Um, I think he's telling the truth. And I think these guys... You know, they were always kind of disparaging the dark underbelly of America. This is what uh, Don Henley says a lot, what Hotel California is about and the end of the innocence. And there's certain songs that Don Henley has pointed at the kind of behavior that he was engaged in here. And I know it's on a micro level, but it, it's still that kind of behavior and um, to me, it, it's, it makes all of that music just performance art. Like all those lyrics are just like, hey, they're thought-provoking lyrics, but you don't really mean it because you would have treated uh, your guitar player better because you're exhibiting the same kind of behavior that you're putting out there on the radio and telling, preaching to people every day. And I, I know it's not hard preaching, but it's still preaching. Um, and some people take issue with some of the things that he's uh, said in songs. It, it tends to, to focus on the dark side of human nature and so forth. And this behavior toward Felder was the dark side uh, toward human nature. And it's, it's kind of sad. But in any event, um, I'm done with this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. And yeah, I need your help over on Patreon for just a dollar a month. You want to do more, you're welcome to do $2, $5, whatever you can afford to help keep this channel going. As you know, um, the music industry is rather slow right now, so I'm going to have to buy more books <laughs> and talk about um, more you know, controversial things that have already happened because uh, there ain't nothing going on but the rent right now, um, to quote a song from the 90s or the 80s. Uh, in any event, thanks for watching and um, we'll talk soon.